This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Wow. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life. Together, we can make these difficult conversations easier. And one difficult conversation is medical hemp. Ah, yep, hemp. Together we can explore the pros and cons of medical hemp. Together we can move these issues that our loved ones, especially our military veterans, who are suffering needlessly. So we need to talk about that. And today we are navigating the journey. The journey of discovery, the journey of life, the joy of life is in the journey. So here we go. Yes, hemp with all of these wonderful, wonderful veterans. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having us. Veterans, all of which have created a business that is complementary and alternative medicines of Oahu. And it helps countless numbers of veterans better understand their opportunity to use hemp-based medicines to treat PTSD, chronic pain, diabetes, and many other ailments and symptoms there. So, let's get right to it. Absolutely. Yeah, right. this, we've Thank got a parents. lot. Aloha. Aloha. First, let's, let's introduce, you are Theo. Theo Alexander, I'm one of the co-founders of Complement in Alternative Medicine of Oahu. Thank you for having us on the show. So, now you were a veteran. What branch of the service were you in? Yes, I served uh, right after high school. I enlisted in the military at the age of 17. Um, I enlisted in the U.S. Navy. Um, I ultimately served on the USS America, which is an aircraft carrier. It was the last conventional Kitty Hawk class carrier in the fleet, uh, CV-66. Hoorah. Um, <laughs> I served during the Gulf War, so I served in the early 90 era. I got out, I exited the military in 93, but I've been dedicated to serving veterans ever since then. And now you have these, all these pretty letters under behind your name, what does the, all of that mean? <laughs> okay. Three letters, yes. I love yes. that. Well, um, you have a master's in health what? Health administration. Health so, administration. Um, so you know what you're talking about here, right? Yes. Um, oh, okay. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> all right. And next to you, you are James, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, retired Corporal James Trice. <clears throat> 91 Ooh. Whiskey Combat Medic, healthcare specialist. A medic yes, in the Marine Corps? Army. Army. Army all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I was stationed here at Schofield Barracks in uh, 2004. We taught first aid and combat lifesaver courses up at uh, HAC DISCOM, uh, Division Support Command over at Schofield Barracks. So we deployed to Iraq 2007, uh, I'm sorry, 2006, and we returned 2007 to OIF 4. So you're a medic in uh, yeah. watching all the battles and the Absolutely. Putting people back together and all that right. kind of stuff. That was, uh, it's one of those things where I would want a me doing that for me in those situations. It's not <laughs> a, I don't necessarily enjoy seeing people hurt, but uh, knowing that people need that kind of help, I'd rather it be me working on somebody than somebody who doesn't, you know, doesn't maybe know care as much. Yeah. Know, right? so. Okay. And down at the end here. Hello. Hello. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Daniel Sauls. Um, I'm the project developing and service consultant for CAMO, Complementary and Alternative Medicines of Oahu. And uh, yeah, I've been with the company, this specific company, with these guys for about two years, but I came as a Coast Guard veteran into the company, seeking the same exact medical help. And after these guys helped me, I really wanted to be a huge part of it. So I took my side and my know-how, and that's how I got to be with these guys. So as in the Coast Guard, uh, what, what did you do in the Coast Guard? Okay, so as anybody who's ever been enlisted in the military can tell you, when you ask them what did they do, it's like, what didn't they say what they didn't were they do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with funny. that being said, the titles that were associated with my job were first, you come in as a seaman. I was a seaman on the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Rush. Hoo-ha, you guys made me do that. <laughs> um, my boat is actually decommissioned, so you can't see it at Sand Island anymore, but I was a seaman there first, and then I finally got to do what I was dreaming of doing and uh, moved to the aviation program out at Barbers Point. And I was actually there for uh, both of the aircraft that went down out there, but uh, I was a seaman, a seaman, fireman, and then an aviation electronics technician. 
So let's talk about the business and what is it that you do? Uh, how do you, who is it for, what do you do, and what are all of these things we have lined up here? Okay. okay. Start, yeah. let's, let's start at uh, what is it that you do? A community outreach. Um, now, I meant with, for the veterans, you said you reach out for the veterans. Which initially veterans? we started out for veterans, however, we do not turn away anyone, so civilians are also welcome. Um, I myself have an honorable discharge, a permanent disability retirement, so I have access to certain you know, uh, benefits you know, for veterans. However, when I initially started advocating for veterans, it was to help the homeless veterans, the displaced veterans, to help them get, better contact, get in contact better with their benefits, ID cards, uh, different services, things like that, because the VA was very backlogged at the time. So getting contact with the primary care, you know, provider, it was very difficult, and there's not, there wasn't much, uh, there's guidance, but the uh, proactivity was, was minimal. So. Exactly, it's it's almost as if it, within doing our poverty alleviation and things like that, and for veterans and things that we were focusing on, then we found a more key problem, which is what we're here with today, that most of the veterans, almost every single one of the veterans that we were dealing with that had gone either homeless or financially in trouble, it's because their PTSD or their conditions that they got while fighting, just like we did, aren't being taken care of because of those backlogs. Right. And since PTSD was one of the strongest things and all of us had you know, solved our mm -hmm. problem this way, we, uh, we yeah, figured kinda. it'd be better as opposed to start with the poverty alleviation, fix the problem at the source and start helping with the total wellness. And that's what each of us do with helping get veterans who need it, not only their access, but just like you said, their know-how right. and their, their knowledge and, and the, the ability to help spread it because it can't just be up to us. It's got to be the people we help helping other people as well. We need it this way. Yeah. So when you have all of these medicines, uh, well, so let's talk about how do you reach the veterans? How do you, you all know okay. each other, but yes. is there an, um, Hotline? Is there a web page? How do you reach? We them? do have a phone number, and the number is. The phone number is 808 538 3338. The as far as community outreach, more yes. so the uh, we pass out toiletries and the soaps. We pass out food and plates at Ala Park the Kaka'ako area, Chinatown a lot because that's and our in, immediate area. And in those dealings, those are the times we make the, the, the veteran contacts a lot. Yeah. If for, for those who didn't ring the number or those who didn't have the computer to send the email, Absolutely. the hands-on is what also reaches them as well. Okay, so, so tell us about these items here. Okay. What are these? So what we have here are, are hemp-based um, CBD, THC-free. Um, products, which means that they are not psychoactive. They don't cause any type of psychosis. Um, THC is the only molecule in the plant that has the alteration with um, psychological components. So what we do is we utilize the hemp product as a medicinal as opposed to THC because if we know THC is a Schedule I uh, yes. controlled substance, and for most people they cannot have a Schedule I controlled substance in their urinalysis right. if you have a job or whatnot. So we will um, often um, promote the products that don't have THC in them so they can use the medicinal property as well and, and gain the, the uh, holistic value of how hemp or cannabis uh, well, helps with our body. Okay, tell us about hemp. Now, okay. the difference in this hemp and ca uh, the... Cannabis. No, not... Well, yes, cannabis, industrial. but uh, industrial hemp. Okay, so the in industrial hemp component is more something that is used in the textile. We can wear hemp fabric. We can um, utilize the hemp uh, seed that you grow from the industrial hemp. Um, you can buy that in Whole Foods and other areas down to earth. And it's just seed. It's high sense of protein, omega-3 fatty acids. But with the... Um, so if you buy the seed, what, do you put it on your cereal or something? Have you can put it on your cereal. You can put it on ice cream. You can put it on the just about anything. The choices are kind of limited. It's a nutty know? flavor, so it's, it's a really delicious... Which is why you see so many products here, too. There's yes. like so you know, many it's different... delicious yeah. additives. Yeah. Nutritional. Yeah. So, so this is the hemp. Yes. And it comes in this various... Numerous uh, varieties. Like these are the capsules that you're holding. They're 50-milligram capsules. 
um, the average daily intake for hemp is recommended is 25 milligrams. And so what we try to do with the veterans, when you was asking about the veterans and how we help, we try to designate um, within their uh, individual diagnosis um, what would be better for them as far as the doses regulation. Much like when you go to a pharmacist or to the physician, they will prescribe medications. But with us, we have recommendation for the THC market, but for the hemp market, you can go get these over the counter. But 25 milligrams a day um, helps with homeostasis, um, with diabetes. It helps to balance the blood sugar and the blood pressure and things like that. Um, at the product you're holding right now is a hemp beard oil. oil. So it helps with the follicles as far as <clears throat> most men when they I shave. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. 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 I usually do. I didn't want to put too much on today, so I wasn't too shiny. In case. <laughs> <laughs> right. but, so tell me what about you? Your beard looks great. Oh, uh, I appreciate it, uh, Mahalo. Uh, it actually helps because, you know, uh, you know, darker people, our hair tends to be more coarse. And that actually makes it a lot softer and a lot easier. To, it helps keep it clean also. Yes, and yes. the skin underneath it because... Uh, say, for instance, in military, a lot of us in military, we get shaving profiles. Shave chits. Right? <laughs> I was you just shave, you get razor bumps. That helps so to alleviate those anymore. because it helps to soften the skin <laughs> as well as to soften the actual hair themselves. Mm -hmm. So the hairs don't have to try to force themselves through causing you know, the bumps. And this is? That's actually a, a tattoo salve. So for people who like to get tatted, I haven't reached that realm yet, but for people who like to get tatted, this will give them new skin. Um, as you know, that when people get tatted, they have to have an ointment on it, an antimicrobial ointment, so that it didn't infect it. Well, this one's a very, very powerful ointment. Uh, once you put it on, it, like I said, it gives you new skin in like three days, which cuts down the infection rate, and also helps the tattoo to set as far as the ink. So it's a very good product. Very I know good product. nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if We're I learning. may, yes. for, for, for those of us that uh, don't understand Theo's uh, fluent Greek in the, in the medical <laughs> profession. Uh, for those of us who don't know the, the non-psychoactive and things like that, because when I, when I first got into it, I needed layman's term help. And uh, basically what's been said here, these products are from exactly what you think they're from, but these don't get you what we call high. Mm -hmm. That's what non-psychoactive means. These products give you the same benefits as far as pain relief, anxiety relief, depression relief. It's, it's the same super drug, if you will, that, that, it's, uh, that it is in its full form, but without the psychoactive properties. And again, as he said, this is over the counter. You can get most of these products right now in, in Whole online. Foods or online, Walmart yes. or online or Amazon and things like that. And it's perfectly legal. You won't get in trouble with your job, which is a big hang up and things like that. And these are the things that not only do people need to hear, but these are the things we properly educate about. Because that fear is what leads people away from medicine that could help them a lot and back into the hands of things that you need more. So counseling and things. Okay. For now, we, I have to go to break, and then when we come back, and we want to go through the rest of these. Okay. And uh, I want to talk about the opioid addiction and how this can help. Absolutely. Okay? Order. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Hi, we're back. And with all of these wonderful young men who are telling us all about hemp and how they help the veterans. Yes. And the big thing that everybody's talking about is opioid addictions. Yes. And I know, I know <laughs> Uncle Sam writes prescriptions and says, here, take this and then you're gone. Right? I, I know that. That's part of the way Uncle Sam does this. And so, now they're addicted. Tell me, 
How does this help? What do you do? How do you? I know nothing. So tell me all about this. Do you want to taste this one first? Yeah. And then you feel? <laughs> There's uh, Wait, slaves. Are they, are they addicted to the opiate or to the relief of pain? To the opiate. It's where it is in the brain. Right. It's it's yeah. actually it's both. You're, you're right, right. With, with, with that. They never talk about that. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. Right. Uh, okay. um, yeah let's let's let you okay. touch that first. Yeah. I mean, on JT, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the patients that I've seen um, personally, the opioid addiction, it it, you know how heroin is, is strong, and they it stems from seeking a uh, cure from the pain, and they they get used to it. It's like a crutch and it, it helps ease it and then it becomes easier to use the opioid and easier rather, to prescribe right, it and, and continue the easier prescription. To prescribe it. So a lot of there are some patients that you do find that are seeking drugs to seek the high and the feel of it. But then there are patients who really are genuinely trying to find and alleviate pain because and don't the know opioids and the morphine things, they, they don't work and they don't like that it makes them sick or nauseous or can't get out of bed or can't take care of their kids or walk around the house. The things that really matter in their life. Common chores. Is the, it, it's, it's almost as if not only is the illness debilitating them, but the medication is causing, is a hindrance to the healing. So mm. then, so where cannabis helps with a lot of those patients is... Uh, to wean them off of the opioids and the methadones and by substituting or in, in tandem or complement with yes. the CBD at the same time because you can also use the CBD when you are exercising. The salve you would rub if you had psoriasis but also if the pain because it's so deep set in there, you know, uh, pitting edema when you have things like gout and you cannot stand things like uh, the... Which one is that? I'm sorry, the, uh, the salve, the, the capsules, yeah. and... The maybe tincture. you know what, abs actually, yeah, the tincture because it's sublingual, so it's easy, and the under water. The and so the that just, that's the, the one that goes under your tongue? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the yes. sublingual formula, yeah. yes. And the reason why I say the water additive is because if you went to the hospital, I would, as a medic, I would suggest a, a, a CBD, um, I'm sorry, IV. So since you cannot, the, the water additive for a sports strength additive, since you're exercising so heavily and trying to re-nourish your muscles yeah. and your endocannabinoid system. You, you get the relief that you're supposed to from these medica medicines that have the opiates in them. You get the relief without the, the addiction and the dependency that they want so you become the repeat customer. Absolutely. You get all those things from these and you don't have to have counseling afterwards. You don't have to have a dependency. You don't have that feeling in the middle of the night that you have to wake up because you need it. It's a, you, it, it gives you the freedom of having, being free from your pain and keeps the freedom of choosing whether or not you want to take medicine or want to go somewhere as well. Um, I saw person. a man on YouTube and he says he puts three drops in his atomizer because yeah. he has COPD and he said once he started that, it, the lungs opened absolutely. up. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I thought, wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Explain. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, there, one of the things that we have a challenge with is because we don't want to make any medical claims because the FDA does not regulate well, these yeah. products. And so we have to be careful with what we say, how it helps the body. Um, but we do see the results in the research. Um, Dr. Sue Sisley, um, who is... Um, one of the lead researchers, if not the only research researchers at um, who is that? <laughs> if not the only researcher that has been successful at studying PTSD as it relates to veterans and how we use cannabis to treat our PTSD. Now she's doing a TAC based study, but with us, we would like to focus more on the CBD because it has the same value um, as far as giving relief to the patient who may be seeking this and. Here in this state, we have qualifying medical conditions for that. But as I said, this is the over-the-counter products. Um, this is something you can Google. Um, one good site that people can look at is cbdproject.com. Mm -hmm. That way you can get a, a good variation of the studies that are out there and also with how it can help you maybe. You know, you might find some really good information as far as what this medicine can do for you. Or you can give us a call. Um, we'll definitely be happy to, to, to take well, that on. Now, on Friday, we do uh, 
with a camera. We're live yeah. on the street. Yeah. And this Friday we are going to uh, a medical marijuana lab, mar medical cannabis lab. Yes, analysis lab. Yes. Yes. yes we're, we're very happy that they're open. Great. Yeah. Yes. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we are going to go visit and uh, see what is going on in the lab yes. and whatnot. Uh, yesterday's paper, the advertiser, I was disappointed in the headline that said uh, pot was going to be and in Pakalolo. So it gave it the sense that this is yeah, a street drug. I mean, yes. mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was it's, it's the continuing disservice. The yeah. it, and it, you is, know, but it very much is. Even though they're contributing to the stigma, there's a culture of medical marijuana that's been here forever. Ever, yes. Way before reefer madness ever right. surfaced. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a challenging thing to accept some of the uh, non-medical terminology when you're talking about a medical benefit. But you know, we still have to realize that we are patients and we're not getting the amount of advocacy we need from our government mm -hmm. or from um, the hospitals. Um, some of the physicians, they are knowledgeable about CBD and THC and they're being um, regulated not to be able to speak with the patient about it. Well, uh, well, you know, well, you know this, that the medical schools are underwritten by the pharmaceutical companies, yes. and so they're not going to let you talk <laughs> yes. about something that's <laughs> not pharmaceutical. Yes, yes. And, and, and that's totally understandable, but I do challenge the medical community to realize that this is called medical cannabis, and because people are finding relief, well, they need to find somewhere to get their terminology and find a way to relate to these patients. We need them as there advocates. There is evidence-based research. We need them. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just so thrilled with what you're doing for the veterans. Um, do you, other than your outreach, your physical yeah. being there and visiting with them, is there another way you reach them? Yes, I mean, we... Um, Our website is private. It's password protected, sorry. The reason the website is password protected is not only to protect the patients, but to continue to protect us because we still we do understand that the stigma with the THC being Schedule One, we don't need anyone to feel like they're in danger of communicating with us, uh -huh. and as well as us that's being able to communicate with other people. So how do you? you to feel that's, that. that's where I was going with this to protect. Yes. Them. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's all about taking care of the patient. And so they don't have a bad P test, right? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm. That's, that is <laughs> that's, 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 that's a big concerns. one. That's Absolutely. a big deal. That's a These big deal. These exact concerns. Yeah. So that for their job or. It's about exactly what you said, conveying these securities and showing them that not only when you deal with us will you be getting the relief that you want mentally and, and physically and things like that, but also like as far as your wellness for. It doesn't make any sense to give you a medicine that makes you feel like you're going to lose your job. Right. Creating new stress does not medicate anybody. That's not going to. That's not going to help anybody. It's about clarifying that these things are in not only within your rights, but you need them, and you shouldn't feel ashamed for medicating. So, do they? How do they pay you? <laughs> well, we don't necessarily get paid. We volunteer our services. Um, we're really pushing the idea of veterans helping veterans. To overcome we some of the stigma. Us, which is the, so, the laugh. <laughs> like, hey, right we now we are, people. because we're yeah. pushing to go like to a more public um, approach for what we do for veterans, uh, usually we get direct line of referrals from physicians or psychologists to deal with certain veterans who may be classified as um, at risk with so PTSD. They, they so they know to where you are. Yes, we, usually we get referrals, direct line referrals from the medical community, but to reach out, you know, we, we're starting our public outreach campaign at this point in time. And so for us to be able to do that, um, we are going to start opening up the website opportunities for people to start taking their assessments or contact us on the website and giving us their information so we can follow up with them, much like any uh, other clinic would, would do with you. But um, <clears throat> our approach at this point is to, to do other things. Um, our, 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 the name Complementary Alternative Medicines of Oahu came out of the situation of having recreational therapy opportunities That's here amazing. in Hawaii because we have a beautiful 365 day you know, yes. opportunity to, to go out and play in Hawaii and so we want to get the veteran outside of that stigma of, of medical services just dealing directly with the clinician and out to do something fun like equine therapy, aqua exactly. therapy, music and therapy. things like that. Music Steering therapy. Steering them away from like just that. get your medicine and go home. Get your medicine and go home. You can be social again. You can go out and do the things that you could you know, before you served your country and again. Right. It's about that. Now, the people that you have served or yeah. are serving, uh, do you have 
Do they know each other? Do you have a way of yeah. connecting them with each other? Um, at times they know each other. It's, you know, servicemen, the it's same way sometimes we know each other and things like that. But uh, for the most part, uh, they haven't had the opportunity to group together, but there has been discussions recently, just like the, uh, the laboratory discussions about us being able to finally, since we're going public and starting our campaign, putting together a support group as well for exactly what you just described. Mm -hmm. So that the loneliness and the, the, yeah, the shun doesn't feel that, that way anymore. Yes. Knowing that there's more people that are trying to get the same help that you are makes it feel better to reach out. So yes, we yeah. will be offering that. Because, service. you know, I belong to lots of Facebook uh, groups that are closed. Mm -hmm. You you know, right. not everybody can go, not everybody can right, see, yes. and so you're protected. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering if, if you had this opportunity, and since most okay. people are on Facebook, I'm too old to, to do it regularly. But no, absolutely. Every course I take, <laughs> every course I take, every paid course has a Facebook yes. where we the students talk to Social each other. Media, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. we're very adamant as individuals about reaching out to our fellow veterans. But again, now that we're launching our public campaign, CAMO as a company will reach out to veterans more. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, as, as Theo said, mm -hmm. the referral base has been giving us, <laughs> as you can imagine with the VA being as backed up as it is, the referral basis has been giving us plenty of patients. And now that we can handle more, we're going to have the means to be able to, and, and we're going to have facilities to send them to now. We're expanding our outreach as well to be able to extend this mission, extend this mission the way we wanted to all along. Okay, one more time. Tell us your contact, telephone number, and Facebook, a web page or whatever. So the Facebook page is Complementary and Alternative Medicines of Oahu. Not, uh, and uh, no ampersand. Okay. Uh, the email is 808camo, C-A-M-O, at gmail.com. Simple. Very right. good. The website is www.808camo.org, and it is password protected, so call us, contact us, and we can get you that password so you can access the website. Great. Well, it's been a real pleasure it's being with pleasure. you. It's been all hours. <laughs> and yeah. do come back yes. and tell us your progress, yes. and if there's any else we can do let us know thank you thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank, thank you. you so much aloha uh,